Captain's Log, Stardate 5106.7. We've been crisscrossing a small region of Sector 47, where an unusual object has been detected by long-range scans, but has not yet been located. Captain, an unidentified derelict vessel has been detected 307 kilometers off the port bow. There are no signs of life. What do we know about it, Commander? It's approximately 8 meters long, 3 meters in diameter, 7,500 kilograms, and there are accommodations for up to three humanoid life forms, and according to all our scans... Uh, never mind, sir. Clearly there's a problem with our scans. Humor me, Commander. What do the scans indicate? Well, according to our scans, the vessel was manufactured on Earth. Is that a problem? It was manufactured over 300 years ago. Earth vessels from that era moved at a snail's pace. It would take thousands of years for one of those to even make it out here. So there's no reason for it to be there, yet it is. And to add to the mystery, sir, no vessels of this type were reported missing on Earth at that time. All right then, let's go take a closer look. It looks familiar. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like this in a museum. Captain, I believe I may be able to heal. All right, Lieutenant, what do you got? In my studies, I have come across vessels nearly identical to this, but this one is new to me. There are additional systems, but I am sure this is a Russian Soyuz spacecraft. First generation, made in, 1960s. I don't recall seeing anything like this, though. That is because you learned space history at Starfleet Academy. I studied at Shoyubing State University, where our history was more heavily weighted. But um, as far as I know, this never passed the design phase. So if this is a Russian craft, how'd it get way out here? That I cannot tell you, Captain. I'm sorry. No need to apologize, Lieutenant. Let's take a closer look at this thing. Why don't you accompany me down to the hangar deck? Navigator. Aye, sir. Track this thing into the hangar deck. Brousseau to sick bay. Farrell here. Doctor, can you join us on the hangar deck? Sir, I just got word they found two bodies in that vessel. They're preparing to beam them to transporter room three. With your permission, I think that's where I need to be. Very well, Doctor. Proceed. All right, folks, we're going to do the emergency medical protocol here. Mr. Sterling, energize. 
Energizing. Stand by. Decontaminate. Go. Ten milligrams of triox compound. You need to raise his core temperature. Use isometrazole. Are you getting cortical activity? It looks good. Very good. All right, everybody clear the pad. Mr. Sterling, transport directly to sick bay and energize. Denson, I want your survey team to cover every inch of this thing. Yes, sir. Is this coming across on 97.5? Yes, sir. Decon team to the red containment area. Decon team to the hmm. red Are you also getting this on 97.1 megahertz? Yes, I am. Good. All right. This ship is 300 years old. It's a living piece of history. Treat it with respect. Don't do any more damage to this ship than you absolutely have to do to check it out. All right? Aye, sir. You take the aft, you take the midsection, I'll take the command module. Piper, report any anomalous readings. I want to know what makes this thing tick. This vessel hasn't ticked in a couple hundred years, sir. Oh, and sir, I'm detecting quite a large amount of explosives. Explosives? As in bolts between the modules? It's possible, sir, but it seems a bit excessive. I need more data. Lieutenant Malikoff, now that you had a chance to get a close look at this thing, any thoughts? It looks exactly like Soyuz spacecraft 7K OK, but... This module. What about it? It looks like housing clander for moon. Now I've heard that the Soviets made a moon landing attempt back in the and 1960s, filter, but I always thought that was a conspiracy theory. Alpha. This may be one time when conspiracy theory is true. Start respiratory support. Get me a cortical stimulator and 40 cc's of antiprotal. I want you to start me a hypo, 10 milligrams of cordrazine in suspension. You set that thing at 250 and hit it. Reset it. Again, hit it. Give me that hypo. Everybody stand back. Computer, note time of death. Working. TOD off. Is there something I can do for you, Lieutenant? Keefton asked me to come. 
These men are rich. We have bond. Of course. I'm sorry, it's been a rough couple of minutes. What can you tell me about these men? They are Russian cosmonauts. I do not know their names. Well, I can help you there. This is... was... Vladimir Yavarsky. He's their mission specialist. I've had a little bit more luck with bed number two. This is Alexei Bogdanov. He was their command module pilot. Now, Jovi, I want you to monitor him on circuit K3. And if anything changes, call me. And send him to autopsy. Yes, sir. Please, stay calm. You, you, you are Russian? Yes, I'm Russian, but... Did I, did I press button? Did I cancel? I'm sure you did, Mr. Bogdanov. No, you do not understand. Must cancel. All will be lost. Must cancel. Wait! He's trying to tell me something. It could be important. Okay, but he's been through a lot. He needs to be sedated. Was top secret must not fall into wrong hands. If we land safely in Mother Russia, I cancel. If we crash, if we land in wrong place, explosive charge destroys ship. But I, I blacked out, did not press cancel. Must cancel now, must cancel now. Must cancel, must cancel now. Bruce Yes. Must cancel Lieutenant now. Malikov, Must there cancel. are explosives on Soyuz spacecraft. Must Get cancel. everyone away from that ship. Are you sure? How do you know? Yes, Cosmonaut was revived. He told me. Everyone must get clear. Thank you, Lieutenant. Hangar deck. This is the captain. Get everybody away from the Soyuz craft and tractor it away from the ship as soon as possible. Let me know when it's clear. Aye, sir. Brousseau. The vessel is clear, sir. Raise shields. Aye, sir. Raising shields. Damage report. No damage, sir. I need to know more about that craft and its crew. Sick bay. Dr. Farrell. Farrell here. Doctor, as soon as Mr. Bogdanov. Thank you. As soon as Mr. Bogdanov is on his feet, give him a tour of the ship, and bring him to the bridge. Bridge. Well, Alexei, what do you think of the tour so far? I do not understand most of what I have seen. We are not in Russia, are we? No, Alexei, we are not in Mother Russia anymore. In fact, we're thousands of light years out in space. This is the Starship Dominion, Federation-class dreadnought. She's 320 meters long, 290,000 metric tons with a crew of 500, capable of warp factor 8, even warp factor 10 in a pinch. What is this warp? Something that is beyond my field of expertise. Somebody will explain that to you later. A, a doctor. How long was I unconscious? Computer stopped, turbo left. Alexei, you were not just unconscious. For all practical purposes, you were dead. Now, you were flash frozen. It happened very quickly. And you remained that way for just about 300 years. Because a spark of life remained, we were able to revive you. We were not able to do the same for Mr. Yavarsky. I am sad to hear. Yeah. 
Me too. Computer, continue. Now, when these doors open, you're going to see some things that are going to be very difficult for you to process. Just remember that everything that you're going to see is normal for this place and for this time. You're not in any danger, okay? Jason, I'd like you to meet somebody. This is Alexei Bogdanov. This is Soviet Cosmonaut. Welcome aboard, Mr. Bogdanov. Mr. Bogdanov. Yes, sir. Welcome aboard, Mr. Bogdanov. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Captain. What gave it away? The chair? Mr. Bogdanov, your ship just exploded, and it almost exploded while it was in my ship. If it hadn't been from some quick thinking on Lieutenant Malakoff's part over there. Our mission was moon landing. Moon landing? There's no record of a Soviet moon landing, at least not in the Soyuz era. America was months away from Apollo 11. We could not allow them to beat us to moon. There was not even moon program, I would know. The program was quickly organized and very classified. We were not ready, but we had to be first to move. That explains the explosives. If they'd been successful, it would have been a huge win. But if they'd failed... No one could ever know. Not even the Russian people. What's the problem? We could not land. When we returned to Earth, we miscalculated re-entry angle. We skip off atmosphere. In those days, there was no access fuel for emergencies or course corrections. No rescue would be mounted. No hero's welcome, no hero's funeral, nothing. You would either win or fail in obscurity. At least we did not come home as failures. Captain. We are being hailed by a cloaked Romulan vessel. Yellow alert. On screen. Captain Bissell. How nice to see you again. The pleasure is all mine. How can I help you, Commander? You know, I didn't get your name the last time. Commander Jude Devaro. And this is my first officer, Ruti Sa Calais. Captain Back off the neutral zone border. Your childlike curiosity has gotten you too close for my comfort. What would you do if I wasn't here to keep you safe? Commander Devaro, if you check the terms on the Accord, you will see I'm well within my rights to be here. Captain, you're charging weapons. Plasma torpedoes away, Commander. I believe that's what your people would call a shot across the bow. <laughs> we outgun you on every level, Commander. I wouldn't start a fight that you can't finish. How about we all just go home happy, and maybe next time we'll find something that we can really fight about. Not the airlock again! Not the airlock again! I see your first officer is fully recovered. Tell me, Commander Chamberlain, how are you feeling? <laughs> you know, it goes without saying that we have our differences, but for what it's worth, thank you. Because I am largely here because of you. 
and what you did for me. You were a useful bargaining chip. That is it. Captain, they're moving away. They're beyond the border. So, nothing has really changed. In my time, it was country against country, region against region. Now it's the same, but larger scale. Alexei, I can't tell you that the galaxy is without conflict. But we will stand up when our lives, our homes, and our freedoms are threatened. But we will stand down when we can avoid conflict and save lives. Conflict and violence seem to be a matter of human nature, avoidance of which must be cultivated, nurtured, learned, and passed down through the generations. That's right, Mr. Quincy. We're not perfect. Not by a long shot. But we're working on it. We're trying to be more Vulcan-like without losing our humanity, no matter how flawed. I do not know this uh, Vulcan-like, uh, Vulcan but Starfleet sounds like something I could be a part of someday. Captain, do you think he could attend Starfleet Academy? I don't know, Lieutenant. He was a cosmonaut, and you would think that would give him a head start. But his knowledge is over 300 years old. He'd have a lot to catch up on. I will work with him night and day, sir. And I can help when she's on duty. I have very good memory, Captain. Almost, how do you say, uh, uh, photographic. I'd have to pull some strings, but I'll see what I can do. There is still a problem. How could I go back to Earth? I'll be known as failure. I'll bring disgrace to Russia. I don't think so. A lot has changed, but I cannot guarantee. Jason, what if he wasn't from Earth? What if he was an alien who wanted to join Starfleet? But he's not an alien. Or well, is he? I could do something about that, maybe. If you approve, and if he approves. And provided everybody else in here can keep a secret. You have taught me much, Eva. You have been a good friend. I will miss you. Alexei, at the academy, sometimes they will give you time to travel and relax. When they do, go to Lake Baikal in Siberia. It is my favorite place. Mine too. Go there and think of me. Eva, will I see you again? I have one last surprise for you. This is your deck. I will see you sooner than you think. Now go. Ochichu Silna. That's the last of them. If you start feeling a little bit too human from here on out, give me a call. I'll arrange a booster shot. But doctor, you said that... It's just a joke, Alexi. From now on, to any genetic scan, you will appear to be of an ascension. If, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Lieutenant Malakov taught me about DNA. We would all be better off if you would forget everything she told you about DNA technology. Just remember. You are a native of Vincentia V. Your father was a naval officer who was lost in the line of duty. Jason, are you sure about this? Come on, Doc. It's perfect. We got the DNA from Kataka's shuttle. It could be his DNA. Kataka lives! The Dean of Admissions is ready to beam aboard, sir. Well, that's my cue to leave. We wouldn't want her to get suspicious.
Dean Warmer, welcome aboard. Are you sure I can't talk you into staying for a short while? I have an excellent bottle of Sarian brandy. Well, thank you, Jason. You know, I wouldn't even be here at all except I was nearby and I just wanted to stop by and just say hello. Oh, and to pick up my latest applicants, of course. Applicants, plural? Yes, there was a last minute applicant. Very well, come, come. Lieutenant Melikoff is working towards her doctorate in peace negotiation and mediation. Dean Warren, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for the opportunity. Well, you come highly recommended. You better be right about him, Jason. Well, what he lacks in education, he makes up with life experience. Plus, his IQ tests off the chart. Say, that, that accent, it, it sounds like a specific Earth accent. Where did you learn English? I teach him the environment. He knew many words, but I teach more. That, that explains it. Uh, Jason, it's been nice, but I really have to be on my way. Chief, get me out of here. I did not know you were going. You said I should go to Lake and think of you. I also said I had one last surprise for you, and you would see me sooner than you thought. Quincy, did you need anything? Oh, no, sir. I'm here simply to see young Alexei off. I've grown fond of him over the past month. He's a good kid. Yes, indeed he is. You seem troubled, sir. Well, I'm still trying to figure out how a centuries-old ship got so far away from Earth so fast. Well, I could think of a few possibilities. Perhaps could have been pulled in by the gravity well of a star or a black hole. That would have sped it up. Indeed. There are also wormholes, or it could have been picked up by some sort of garbage scow, and discarded later for some reason. Or there's also the possibility of some sort of godlike creature transporting it here for your edification. Now you're just being absurd. Am I, sir? Sard. Oh, I'm sorry, Rousseau. You, <laughs> you... You killed my brother. And you think you're just so safe in that little... pecan ship of yours. Because <laughs> it's so powerful and so strong. But... But, Rousseau, I am going to get you. <laughs> Ha ha ha!